Hello everyone, so today we're going to create a really cool uh, scrolling effect using Swiper.js. Uh, don't hesitate to um, reach us if you have any question. I hope you enjoyed the video, see you. Okay, so today we are going to create a really cool scrolling effect. Um, it's an effect that I saw on a website from Garden8. And it's an infinite snap scrolling effect. And so let's take a look. We can see that we have a um, snap scrolling effect. So I'm scrolling section by section, kind of like um, a slider. And when we reach the bottom of the page, I can see that if I keep scrolling down, I'm coming back to the top. And obviously there's a lot more uh, going on, on on this website, but that's um, what we are going to focus on uh, in this video. And to do that, we're going to use Swipe.js. So it's um, a library, um, really cool library, and the documentation is really great. And so yeah, let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is to install it and we are going to use uh, the CDN method. So let's copy the link tag and import it into our project. So I'm pasting that in my uh, head tag. Let's just clean this. Then I'm taking my script and I'm adding it to my website. So let's save. Now we can see that we have um, the HTML layout. And so we have a main container with the class of swiper, an additional uh, wrapper called swiper wrapper, and then our slide. So let's build that inside Webflow. So let's start. So I have my swiper. Then inside of that, I have my swiper wrapper. And then I have my slide. So it's swiper slide. Let's create three slides. And inside this slide, I want to have a swiper. I'm going to say content. I'm going to give this a height of 100 view H and width of 100 view width. Let's copy and paste. Up. Voila, and let's just change the background color so we can see the difference. So I'm going to say is blue. This one I'm going to say is green. Because why not? And the last one, let's say red. It's not going to be the nicest page, but at least uh, it's going to be a good example. So, okay, so now let's see. Now we need to add some additional styles. So let's copy this and let's add this into our CSS. So let's create just a steel tag and let's add our code. So I'm just going to, ch to change the width and the height. I'm going to say 100 percent and for the height I want it to be 100 view H because I want um, my slider to take my whole screen so uh, yeah um, using these values so let's save and let's see now we need to initialize our swiper and to, to do that we need to um, declare a new variable with um, the name of our uh, swiper class so let's do that and let's see what happens. By the way, let's change the name and just, okay. So let's add a script tag. And so let's say const swiper equal new swiper. And I'm up with the name of the class and I think it should be working. Let's save and let's publish. Let's double check. Yeah, it should be working. So we can see that if I drag and drop on my screen, 
we now have an horizontal slider and um, and yeah so it's not what i want but it's working so now let's see what we can do so let's check the documentation and now what i can do is change the direction and i think it's right there. So what I can do is add a new parameter, so direction, and then I I'm going to say vertical. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So let's go back to the custom code. Let's add a comma and then some brackets. So now let's say direction. I want it to be vertical. One, one more thing I want to do is to add the possibility for the user to use his mouse wheel because for the moment I'm only able to drag and drop. So I can use the mouse wheel and we can see that it's a boolean so it means that it's either true or false and by, defo by uh, default it's false. So let's add that mouse wheel and I can say true. Let's save and publish to see what happens now. Let's refresh. And now we can see that my slider is now vertical and I can use my mouse. So I can scroll using my mouse. So that's better. So let's see, what can we do next? I think that it would be cool to add the possibility for the user to use their, uh, you know, keyboards. And so I think we have the possibility to do that. Um, I don't think it was at the bottom. Oh yeah, it's right there. And just like mouse wheel, it's a boolean. So I can do the same thing I did for the mouse wheel. Let's go to our, Java, to our custom code. Let's say keyboard and let's say true. One more thing I want to do is that I want to be able to go from the bottom to the top. So I want my scroll to be infinite. And to do that, I need to use I think it's a, a loop parameter right there. And I can say, so set to true to enable continuous loop mode. So let's see what happens. I, so if I say loop and then true, let's save, publish and see what's happening. Let's see. So let's refresh. So now we're starting with the, the blue section. I, I scroll to the green, red, and yeah. And I have an infinite scroll and I can use my the, the arrows on my keyboard and I can go from, you know, top to bottom and bottom to top. So I can do that. I think it's a bit fast. I'm going to change the, the, the speed of the slider. So I'm going to add a new parameter. So let's say speed and I'm going to say 1000. Okay, let's save and let's publish. Okay, let's refresh. And we can see that it's, um, it's more smooth. So it's uh, a, bit, uh, a bit nicer. So let's see if we can do um, um, a better example. I created a, a small... Uh, a, a small design it's a one page and since garden 8 uh, are using 3d on their website i figured that uh, we'll do the same thing but uh, we, we'll just use a background video looping in uh, in the background and so we can say that we, we can imagine that it's a small portfolio like a, a one page with a hero section and you know a small text um, introducing you know the, the myself in that case then a discover my work section so it's a link you know taking the users to um, a page with all of my recent works and then a contact section and to to save some times i already uh, created the design and it's on the home page and we can see that we have a header with um, that it has a position um, we have a header with a fixed position and then we have a main wrapper with some section with our hero and a container, the content, the discover my work section and the contact section. 
So let's see how we can uh, integrate SwiperJS with, with that. So remember that we need to add some classes to our element. So I'm going to use the section as slide. So I'm going to say Swiper slide. And I'm going to add that class to all of my sections. Then my main element is going to be my Swiper wrapper. And so I need to add one last uh, div that is going to be my swiper. Okay, then I'm going to take all of the code I added to the swiper.js page. So the CSS and the JavaScript. Let's copy and let's save. So let's publish. And let's see what happens. So now we have a page. And yeah, and so just like that, we have a small um, one page. We have some uh, other animation. It's very simple, of course, but we can see that we, you know, have now the possibility to do a lot of things. And Swiper.js has a lot of parameters and we can do really a lot of things. So it's really cool. So let's add the background video. Uh, let's just add the background video like that. Let's say background video. I want it to have a height of 100 view H, width of 100 view width. Let's say cover with a fixed position. Okay. Let's upload the video. So I already have a small video ready. The, the quality is uh, not that good for the moment. I need to make another render, but it's going to be fine for the example. And let's just give this a relative position so we can see our content. Let's publish again and let's see. So refresh and yeah, and now we have um, by the way, I just noticed that my head is uh, hiding the text. So that's a, a bit of a shame, but yeah, basically that's what we have. And yeah, and it's a small one page, but we from, from that we can do uh, pretty much everything we want. And uh, you can see that with only like five lines of code, we can have a really cool uh, scrolling effect with only this. And one other cool thing that uh, SwiperJS is uh, giving us is that we have some events. Uh, let's check maybe if I search on slide change. Yeah, we have some events. And so uh, we can um, listen to different events. So for example, we have the init event. So when the slider is initialized, we can uh, start a function, we can call a function. Same thing on slide change. So whenever we uh, change slide, we can uh, call a function. And we can see that we have a lot of events and it's really cool. And let's just make an example. Let's just copy this, go to our custom code and paste this. And so on slide change, we're going to have a console log that said slide change. So let's save and see what happens. Okay, let's refresh. Let's inspect. And if it, we take a look in the console, we can see that now if we, if we scroll, we have an event, we have slide change. And again, and if I scroll top, same thing. And so it's really convenient to have that because now we can call different functions uh, when we change slides. So I can animate my text when I leave or when I enter. So it's really cool. And we also have um, more precise events. So we have slide next transition starts. So let's just see what we can do because I, I think it's really nice that we have all of these possibilities. Let's just copy this. 
So we have slide next transition start. So we are going to say next start. So it's an event uh, that's going to occur whenever we are sliding, when we are starting the transition to the next slide. And we are going to say end. So we are going to have next end. And we have the same thing for the previous slide. And I think it's prev. And we're going to say prev start. And we are going to have prev end. Up, let's say start. And let's say end. Let's save, publish, and see what happens. Let's take a look at the console. And so we have a next start, next end. Again, next start, next end. And if I go back, if I go up, prev start, prev end. Prev start, prev end. And one other thing that we can see is that on each section, I have different classes. So I have swiper slide active. So that's the slide that is currently in the viewport. And if I take a look at the next slide, I have swiper slide next. And I also have hop, um, swiper slide prev. So I'm able to target different slides depending on, uh, on their position. So these classes plus the events we just saw uh, allow us to really do a, a lot of animation. We can really um, using GSAP create a lot of cool stuff. And uh, yeah, may maybe we'll do a, a second part to that video so we can see um, how everything is working. But uh, you can also just go to the documentation and yeah, take a look at, at everything and you you'll see we can do pretty much everything we want and with only a few lines of code. So yeah, that's it. And yeah, I, I hope you, you liked the video and see ya. Thank you.